Hello, Anthony. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. Appreciate your time. Um, I guess I, I, I was hoping to start off, um, you know, with with everything that's been going on uh, in the in the country the uh, the past, you know, few weeks here. I guess, um, you know, uh, you as a, as an African American, I guess in particular, want to know if you had any thoughts on these situations, um, you know, uh, going forward, and and uh, you know maybe if you've talked to players as well, and what kind of feedback that that you've received. Well, we talked to our players yesterday. It's a, obviously it's a tough time in our country, um, what's going on right now. And we had a very, very good meeting, just being a sounding board, just letting them um, talk um, how they felt. The same thing with me, I expressed to them and it was very productive. And I thought it was a very productive meeting. And um, the guys, you know, want to help and want to, um, you know, do everything they can to make this country a better place. And, you know, we, they're getting, they're collaborating with each other to think about what they want to do next. So right now, you know, what exactly that is, nobody really knows, but those guys are really wanting to help and pitch in. And the big thing about is just educate and educate um, people on the right way to do things. So the players really want to do that. You know, it was a really, you know, productive meeting and I'm just, it was really good and therapeutic for our guys just sitting there and talk yesterday. And maybe if I could follow, I'll I'll, uh, I'll drop onto the football side here on, uh, again. Um, well, I guess a question with um, Logan Ryan departing from last year. He played so much slot. Uh, um, any thoughts on on who is the most likely of your of your guys to step into that role, and anybody that really seems to to fit that description particularly well at this point? Well, obviously Logan, you know, was was a very productive player last year. But once we get on the football field, we're going to have many guys, you know, playing that position and it's going to be a competition and, the, you know, the best guy we fit going forward to um, give us the best chance to win. That's the guy that um, will end up um, giving the position to. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Coach, good to see you. Appreciate your time. Um, Kerry Combs, obviously a coach who is very animated, very vocal with players. I, I, how would you describe your coaching style? And, and obviously it's worked for you over the years since you're, 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 you're sticking with it. Well, I'm not an in-your-face type guy, animated or anything like that, but I'm very demanding. I'm demanding that the guys do the things we're asking them to do and demanding that we get the best of, out of our players and, you know, just iterating the things that Braves emphasize, you know, just playing hard, playing with great effort. And that's what we're going to require from our guys, and that's what we're going to demand. But you're not going to see me running up and down the sidelines, but the guys just going to understand the expectation that we as a staff have for them and that we're going to demand from them. And one guy you're very familiar with, Jonathan Joseph, what will he bring to the team and how good is it for you to have him help maybe showing some of the younger guys the way? Well, he's an awesome, like, you know, outside of being, a, you know, a vet that's been playing a lot of productive football in this league, he's a great person. And he's a great guy to help everybody in the room. He's been doing that on these calls. He's built, you know, he's starting to build relationship with guys now. They have a lot of respect for him because anybody that's played in the league this long has been doing something right. So it'd be good for him um, to come in and provide some veteran leadership and um, so some of the younger guys to teach them how to be pros and how to, um, you know, have longevity in this league. Paul Kaharski. Hey, Coach, can you take us through uh, getting to know Vrabel uh, in Houston and, and what kind of relationship you built there that it's it's turned into this opportunity? Well, we came in together um, the same year in, in Houston, and, you know, it was a great relationship off the bat. Vrabel was really smart. He was a guy I learned from, even when he was just the linebacker's coach coming in. Then when he transitioned um, to the defensive coordinator um, spot, it was the same deal, um, a guy that, had a very, very good, great relationship with all the players, smart, um, put in the time, hard nose, and, you know, just being there with him, getting to know his family. He knows, you know, my family, and it was just a great fit um, coming here and working for him for all the things he stands for. With the Dory now uh, seems to be more at the head of the line with, with Logan gone, and, and with Vrabel's been talking a lot about how much – vertical stuff you're seeing particularly out of out of the slot they exercised his fifth year option seems like 
he's a guy uh, that the team's expecting more from. To what degree have you gotten to know him? To what degree are the expectations uh, sky high at this point? Well, obviously everything is right now been through Zoom, been through communication and just talking and going through meetings, but I've been getting to know Dory and he understands, you know, we have high expectations for him. We're expecting great things from him and you're know, expecting consistency and him to come to compete every day. And I'm expecting, you know, big things from him this year. And he understands that and that's been relayed to him. Terry McCormick. Anthony, talk about what impressed you about Christian Fulton as you evaluated him leading up to the draft. One thing we noticed just sitting down meeting with him at the combine and the couple of times I got to meet with him where he was very smart, very articulate, understand, understood the entire back end, a guy that can play inside and outside, and he just fit what we were looking for. You know, he provides versatility and he's coming here every day in the meetings that we've had with him. He's come prepared. He's put in the time he's studying on his own and he's a very, very smart football player. And we're looking, um, we're excited to have him. Teron Davenport. Coach, it's good to meet you. Uh, in regards to this nickel position, it, it's evolved over the years. Can you just kind of get into how you've seen that position evolve and, and the extra requirements that come with that? Yeah, so when you look back at this position, you know, probably you're going back dating years, you know, you had some smaller guys that was really most people look at as just cover guys. But with the way offenses are now, that nickel guy has to be able to cover. He has to be able to blitz. He has to be able to fit in the run game. He has to be smart and he has to, you know, be able to do multiple things. So it's not just the guy that you're putting in a slot just to cover a guy. So he has to be a guy that can go in and mix it up versus the run and the pass and handle everything we'll give to that position um, minimally. Uh, Corey Curtis. Hey coach, welcome to town. Thanks for the time today. Um, Thank you know, you. I, obviously, um, Social issues are, are a big topic right now. The NFL has been trying to tackle for a while, um, getting my, more minorities in place as coaches and administrators in the NFL. They've taken several steps here in the last couple of weeks. Do you like those steps and what else would you like to see happen? Yes, I mean, anytime you're having a conversation, that's positive. And then when you're enacting on um, plans for um, change to have more minorities, in those positions, that's a good thing. You know, what that is, I'm not, you know, here to say about what needs to be implemented, but I just think, you know, the more opportunities that are available for guys to have an opportunity to sit in front of um, guys and present themselves, I think it's a positive deal. And I think those were positive steps um, implemented by the league. How do you feel about the the opportunities that you've had? Um, I feel, you know, great about the opportunities I have. I mean, just being here and, you know, being a, I'm able to join the Titans organization with the head coach that I work with, that I respect a lot, that I, you know, just being in this division, watching um, them from, a, you know, afar, we have a lot of crossover and I just love and respect the way the players play, how they compete, how they play hard, they're tough. And that's what's just exciting. So um, I'm sitting in a position here because Vrabel gave me an opportunity to join on um, this organization. I'm very fortunate. John Glennon. Yeah, Anthony, um, I wonder if uh, you see a fair amount of similarity in the systems between the Texans and Titans, uh, if that will make your transition uh, a little bit easier. Well, I think that's been a benefit, like with the offseason we've had. Um, there is some similarities, but also there are some things that have evolved and that have changed that I'm learning. Um, and I'm learning um, everything, you know, new things each day. So, but I do think some familiarity with the system has helped my transition. Um, with, um, with the situation we're in now without having practices and not being on the field right now. And just a quick follow up sort of along the same lines. I know Jadevian Clown, you've met your position group at all, but I know you've got some background with him and, and there's a possibility he might wind up here. Same sort of question, a uh, similarity in a, in a system, uh, help if a, if a guy, you know, that played for the Texans might land here. Yeah, anytime you have a guy that's been in a system that has familiarity, yeah, obviously the transition, you know, it would help with the transition, just like Jonathan Joseph coming in here. It's things that I can say to him in the meeting, you know, just saying terminology that we use in Houston um, that translate to what we're doing here that help him out. So anytime um, just using Jonathan Joseph as an example, it helps with the transition, help those guys um, learning the playbook. 
Uh, last one for you. Uh, Jim Wyatt had a follow up. Coach, uh, I guess I just want to ask you just about how you like your group as a whole and what are some areas that you look at as you prepare for the season that you think that could could improve? Well, I, I, just being around these guys, I mean, I, I love the attention to detail. You got a guy like Kevin Byer, Kenny Vaccaro, and those guys, you know, Malcolm that's been in the maintenance authority, and then added a guy like Jonathan Joseph. I mean, it's been it's been great. I mean, that the, we have a veteran group, which I think, you know, helps with some continuity with, with the situation we're in. And then the thing that, you know, we just want to comp- improve on, we just want to be consistent, you know. Every time we step on the field, our goal is to be the best, and that's what we want to be week in and week out, and that's what we're going to strive to be each week.